Hello and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. This week I'm trying to make a quick tip again after last week's almost mega tip with one hour running length. So this week we are going to talk about projections in Octane. Basically this is done a lot in visual effects if you want to integrate your objects and want to get them to interact with your real world scene. So let's get started. All right, welcome to our scene. First of all, we are not going to make anything fancy, so no fancy projection mapping, since I want to keep it very simple and a quick tip this time. So basically what we will build is a simple backdrop, a camera and a material to get started with projecting, so you can see the absolute basics. So let's keep going by creating two planes, one plane, two planes, and we want to move the second plane by 200 in Y and 200 in Z, and then go to the plane settings here and set this to minus Z. Also, we want to take both of the planes and extend the width to 800. Here we go. Let's also rename those planes. Next up, we also need a material and a camera. So let's make the camera first, here we go. And let's tackle the material by going to materials, create and create an octane diffuse material, here we go. Let's call this projection. And what we want to do here, instead of the material being diffuse, what we want to do is create a emission. So let's go to the diffuse and make it black. Go to the emission tab and let's create a texture emission here. So with that, we need an image to project. So let's bring this in with the image texture here. And let's go and bring in actually a image of the Sony Center I took in 2005. Here we go. Let's bring that to the texture emissions texture slot. And then what we need to do is a couple more settings to make this not overexposed so much. To do this, we go to the power and set it actually down to 1. And then we go to the surface brightness and set it to on. Otherwise, the emission would take the surface area of the object in account to do its brightness. And with setting this to on, it doesn't, so we get a brightness of 1, which reflects exactly the brightness values of the original photograph. So finally, let's assign the texture to both of our objects here. And we can see now we have a representation of our image. Obviously, the image right now is mapped to the UVs of our planes and not projected. So let's tackle actually the easiest way to project those images. And this is going to those tags and going to the projection method. And instead of UV, we want to set those to camera mapping. That looks a bit strange, and this is because there is no camera set here. So let's set the camera here, and actually set the image film aspect to 16 by 9, as this is the original aspect. Here we go, and now if we move the camera, you can see we are now projecting within Octane. So in 90% of the time, this is just the right way to do projections and you're fine with that. In some other cases, especially if you want to bake the projection down to your object UVs, and this is necessary for some VFX work, you actually need to go with a native Octane camera projection. And this is a little bit harder to set up than the Cinema 4D one. So basically, you are using the UVs right now to transfer the projection down to Octane. So you are prohibited from baking those same UVs again. Let me try to explain that by going to both of those planes and converting those to polygons. Then go to the material tags and actually from the current projection create UV coordinates. And then shift click to open them. Here we go. So what you can see here is that the UVs are actually representing our perspective in the viewport right now. So what Octane is seeing is the UV translation of our projection. 
to bake down a projection to UVs. You probably don't want to have this in a perspective manner, but have the old UV layout where the plane is just spread over your whole UV set. So to do that, we need our setup to be different and not coming from Cinema 3D, but the projection has to come from Octane natively. So let's go ahead and set this up. First of all, I want to redo everything. So we go back to our parametric planes here. And then next, we want to go back to set this to UV mapping. So we get back our old UV setup here. Now, when we do that, we need to set up the projection here. So let's go to projection and actually go in here and set this from UV to perspective. Now, same as Cinema 4D, Octane wants to know the camera's position. So what we can do is to pick the camera here. Here we go. And we can see something has changed, but it doesn't look the same way as in Cinema 4D. So let's see what's wrong here. So first of all, let's go and change the scale here. And we can see that the image now is flipped and upside down. So there's a very easy fix for that. We just have to invert the set axis from one to minus one. And now we have the image in the right orientation again. From a projection perspective, there's something wrong here. And let's actually take one plane and move it up and down. And you can see that actually the projection is moving with a plane. And this is not what a real projection would do. It would stay in place. So to fix this, we move up here and actually go to the position tab and change the position from object space to world space. And now you can see that the projection is coherent. And even if we move a plane, it stays fixed in its position. So the last thing and the most difficult thing to tackle is actually to bring the image to a size that is coherent with our aspect ratio. So we are projecting the image to the exact size of the camera field of view. So let's go to our camera and let me explain some things to you. So if we go to our focal length here and set this to 50 and then go to our sensor size here and actually type that into the scale, but not 36, but 0.36. Then we can see that this is exactly the width of our image that we need. So if we go to 35.9, you can see that it begins to wrap around or let's go to 35. Here we go. Here's the beginning from this side again. So the right scale for the y-axis here is actually just the aspect ratio. So we could do the simple math and go for 0.36 divided by 16 times 9. And now we are getting our correct projections. Congratulations. But there is a problem. So if I change the focal length, this projection stays put. It doesn't move with the focal length to get the new field of view and actually adjust it to it. So this only works with a sensor size of 36 and with a focal length of 50. And this obviously isn't good. So we need kind of a formula that takes 50 and says, okay, when the above value is 50, it's okay to use 36. And when the value is lower or higher, then do something to the 36 value to make it fit again. And the best way to do this is actually the Espresso nodes. So let's go to Espresso land real quick. And basically what I want to do is create a null and call that our projection calculator. And then on top of that, let's create an Espresso. Here we go. So what we need in here is obviously the camera and then the node here, the projection node. Unfortunately, you can't just track that in here. So what we need to do is go the Cinema 4D road and find the projection node in the old interface. And then from there, track that in. Now from the projection node, what we need is the SX and SY. 
And from the camera, what we need is the focal length and the sensor size. So what we need to do here is let's tackle the sensor size first. Let's actually bring in a result node here so we can see the numbers. So what we have here is a value of 36, but what we need is a value of 0.36. So we need to move the decimal point two spots to the left. So to do that, we add a math node. So let's search for math and there it is already. So I did that before, obviously, and bring that in here and then go for multiply and multiply it with 0.01. And this is two decimal places and we then get a 0.36. And this is exactly what we want. Next, we want to have the focal length that is actually 50 right now, a value of one, because that is something that if we divide something through it, or if we multiply something through it, it stays the same. And when we have a focal length of 50, the value of 0.36 should stay the same. So we want to make this one. So let's duplicate the math here. And what we need to do is actually go and multiply that by 0.02. And if we look that up, it is exactly a value of one. Now in the last step, what we need to do is then divide the multiply value for the film gate for the sensor size by the value of the millimeters. So let's set the math node to divide here and let's see what value comes out. It should be 0.36. Yes, this is correct. Here we go. Let's pipe this into our value here and let's do change the focal length here. And we can see that the actual width of the image is staying the same. And this is exactly what we wanted. It is chittering a bit because there's update lag and so on, but in essence, it's staying the same. Now we need to put in the aspect ratio here. So the most easy way to get the aspect ratio is going to our render settings, bring our render settings in here, and then just grab this value, which is our aspect ratio and bring that in. So what we need to do is divide our output here by the aspect ratio and then feed it to the SX value here. And now if I close down everything and move the camera focal length, now the image is staying the same projected correctly. And obviously if I move the camera around, that is also the case. So we built ourselves a projection shader inside of Octane that is doing the correct thing, always projecting the image to the right portion of our backdrop. And because we have used the native Octane tools, our UVs, our original UVs are still intact. So we could use a Octane baking camera. I've made a tutorial about this. You can see it in the link up on the right side here and bake out the projection. And that actually concludes our short tutorial for today. You can download the scene if you want in the description below. As always, let me know if you have ideas and suggestions for any other tutorials in the future. Thank you very much for watching and happy projecting. Bye.